President, but I want to talk for a few minutes today uh, about a program that we need to extend for a short period of time to get it extended to the end of this spending year. I know the minority uh, leader, the Democrat leader, just arrived, and he's heard a lot about this program from my friend Senator Stabenow, the Excellence in Mental Health program, uh, something we started two years ago, passed legislation in 2014, and we've come to the end of the first two years of that trial program. I want to talk more about why we need a longer-term expansion of that trial. Uh, but first of all, we need a three-month expansion uh, to get us a three-month extension to get us to the end of this spending year. I'm always glad to talk about this program when it, because what it does is really begin to close the gap between how we talk about physical health and how we talk about mental health. Somewhere between one in four and one in five adult Americans, according to the uh, National Institute of Health, have a, a mental health problem that's diagnosable and almost always treatable, but less than half of the people that have that problem actually receive the care they need. Uh, these are people that are our neighbors, our family members, our colleagues. Uh, some, th th there's no stigma to seeking care here, and society needs to do a better job, as I believe this program is helping us do, to talk about mental health like all other health. On uh, the last day of October 2013, which was the 50th anniversary of the Community Mental Health Act, that was the last bill that President Kennedy signed into law in 1963, Senator Stabenow and I came to the floor to uh, talk about that 1963 bill and how many things had been closed down because of that bill and how many things had not been opened to replace it uh, when that happened. In the decades that followed, about half of the proposed community health centers that that bill anticipated just simply were never built. Facilities that people had used that had substantial mental health challenges were closed. What really happened here is that in that 50 years, the emergency room and local law enforcement became the de facto mental health system for the country, and nobody has been well served by that. Uh, the local law enforcement hasn't been well served by that. Emergency rooms haven't been well served by that. And most importantly, people with mental health challenges and their families have not been Sent, served by that. So this law, the Excellence in Mental Health Act, was signed into law in 2014 to try to begin to address that problem. What the bill did was create uh, eight states in a two-year pilot that would look at, that would provide mental health at locations that met the standard just like any other health would be provided. These would be certified community behavioral health clinics that would have, among other things, 24-7 crisis services available, outpatient mental health and substance abuse treatment available, immediate screenings, risk, accept, uh, risk assessments, and diagnosis available, and care coordination, including partnerships with the emergency room, the law enforcement community, and veterans groups, all of that would have to be what you'd have to do to be part of that eight-state pilot. Now, 24 states initially applied, 19 states went through the entire process, and eight states were chosen. Missouri was one of those. Uh, and among other things in our state, uh, we participated in the emergency room enhancement a project. This is a project that's designed to identify people who present themselves at the emergency room as people who really need treatment for addiction issues or mental health issues, not other health issues, and then to get them to a place where that treatment is going to be much more appropriate than it's likely to be at the emergency room. Now, in just six months of working with the emergency room, law enforcement, uh, and mental health services uh, in our state, uh, we think there's been a reduction in homelessness of people who came to the emergency room by about 72 percent. 
uh, a reduction of emergency room visits by those people by 72%. Unemployment reduced by 14% among people that have gone to the emergency room with what was a mental health concern. Uh, and law enforcement contact reduced by 59%. So we've got two years of study that indicates that's where we've gotten in our state. And I think other states are seeing similar uh, kinds of numbers. I I've been at clinics all over our state who've talk about, talk who've dealt with this. I've talked particularly to law enforcement people all over our state who have seen the change in the people they're dealing with and the options they have available. Suddenly the option is not just to go to somebody's house at a crisis moment in the middle of the night and take somebody to the emergency room for one night having that problem solved, but the option is actually to go somewhere where your mental health challenge is being dealt with just like if you'd had a heart attack or you have a kidney problem or some other problem. Uh, that's why we've introduced legislation to extend this uh, for another two years. And if money's available in the pay for, we've proposed to even see if we could add uh, more states to those eight states. Uh, when we announced this new legislation, uh, Laura Hebner, who's with Compass uh, health systems in Missouri uh, was one of the people that joins us. She said uh, that in the past, before this program was able to help in our state, that roughly half of the people who sought an opponent uh, sought an appointment rather from their mental health facility uh, couldn't get scheduled for several days, sometimes several weeks, and half of the people didn't come back. If you show up that one time and say, I'm here, I've got a real problem, I need help, and the answer is not, we're going to help you today, we're going to do an evaluation right now, you often, more often than not, or at least as often as not, uh, you don't come back. And so at Compass uh, Health, like in many of our other certified clinics in our state, uh, we've increased access, we've established same-day walk-in uh, attempt to uh, look at your problem and see if you need a, even more help that day or you could in fact come back a few days later for an extensive, everybody, Madam President, is being seen at that facility and others when they come in. The suicide care path they established uh, has uh, been reduced by 70%. So let me make two quick points here as, as I conclude. One is the goal of this program is not for the federal government to take over the behavioral health cost of the country. The goal is for this program uh, to look at mental health and keep track of 24 or 25 other health care markers and decide how much your other health care is impacted in a positive way and in fact a cost saving way if you're dealing with mental health at the same time. And the second point I'd like to make is uh, we need to see the Congress step up in the next few days, extend the current program through the end of this spending year, and then let's have a debate about why two more years of putting all that information together gives states and communities the information they need to find out what I believe will be everybody understands not only the right thing to do, but physically the smart thing to do by dealing with mental health like all other health, the overall health care cost of that big mental health community goes down dramatically if you're seeing your doctor, showing up for your appointments, taking your medicine, your other problems are much more easily man man managed than the cost of adding the right thing to do, health care, uh, mental health care to all our other health care priorities. And so hopefully the Congress will deal with that. The Senate can take a leadership role in dealing with that. The House has already sent us a bill. Uh, we need to respond to that by doing the two things I just mentioned. Uh, let's treat mental health like we treat all other health, Madam President, and I yield the floor.